Okay, so the operation of the battery, um, just some things to look out for here and some real key benefits. So let's first off touch on again, why they're called a BTEC battery. That is because they have the Bluetooth technology inbuilt. So nice, simple, easy, free monitoring via the Bluetooth app, which is available on iOS or also from the, the um, Google Play Store there for your Android devices. So available for de both devices um, and you get a wide variety of information here on the phone. So what are some of the details you're getting through that app? So you're getting your state of charge, so what percentage it's at. You're getting your voltage, uh, always good to look at. You're getting your charge or discharge current. You'll also get a, a little clear, simple thing as to whether it is charging, um, i.e. you've got a charging source connected to it. Whether it's in standby, uh, so as the battery's sitting here at the moment, no charge or no discharge, so it's just sitting in standby. Or if it's discharging, so obviously if you've got a, uh, a load equipped uh, connected to it, fridge, inverter, lights, for example, there. So I'll run through those things there. Um, you'll also be able to get the, how many cycles a battery's had. Now, when we talk about cycles, that is how many times, for example, 125 amps has been drawn from this battery. It's not if it's come down to half and back up again, that's not a cycle. It's if that 125 amps has been removed and then put back in, that's one cycle, for example, there. So you'll get that information. You'll also get the internal temperature um, reading off the battery as well, so you can just keep an eye on that side of things. Also, you'll get the individual cell voltages. So earlier on, I mentioned that inside a 12 volt battery, there is actually four groups connected in series of 3.2 volt cells. So you'll see those readings of each individual cell group of around about that 3.2 volts. Now there is that balancing system inbuilt that I mentioned earlier on that will keep them all pretty similar. However, just keep in mind that there will always be a little bit of fluctuation there. Every cell uh, is slightly different, so there will be a little bit there, so don't get too worried if you're seeing them read just slightly out and all that. They'll come back and balance themselves out. Again, normally we'll see that as if uh, you've got an inverter or a high um, discharge load, or even if you're charging at quite a high rate, there is that chance they'll get out a little bit, but then they'll just settle back again. That's the balancer doing its job there. So keep an eye on that. The other one as well, uh, with the BTEC app as well, it will give you diagnostic codes as well. So you'll see on the, the notifications page, for example, there, you'll have any warnings come up there, but you'll also see the little green LED indicators essentially on the app there, which will show you if you do have a short circuit or over temperature run through there. So a few of those codes there I'll run through now um, because quite often we do get asked what they mean. So for example, the HV1 is for high voltage. The LV is for low voltage. The OCC is for overcurrent charge. So therefore, uh, if you are charging it, so um, for example, if you're trying to put in 200 amps in, into this battery, charging it, uh, it will come out at that overcharge current. Overcurrent discharge is, for example, if you've connected a really heavy load up, so if you've connected something like a 3000 watt inverter up to this 125 amp battery, you'll most likely see that. Also has the low temperature for discharge and the low temperature for charging as well, just because there's the different parameters there, and also the high temperature charge and the high temperature discharge. So that's the HTD and the HTC. Again, uh, all the information there will have a little little image there as to what all those fault codes are as well. It's all listed into the manual as well there. Okay, so now we've looked at the basic operation of the, the battery. But what happens, for example, if you've completely depleted the battery and with that BMS built in again, that's there to protect the lithium cells, the LiPo4, um, lithium phosphate cells. So what happens in that situation? So you've completely flattened the battery uh, and it's shut off. It's done its job, it's shut off, but now longer do you have any power to your lights or to your fridge, for example. The G2s, um, it's very simple. We've actually got the flat battery reset button on the top here. So just press that for a few seconds and that will restart the battery. Turn off all your loads, so turn off your fridge, turn off your lights, turn off your inverter, and just allow it to charge for a period of time before turning on the equipment. You can also apply directly um, a voltage higher than 12.8 volts will wake the battery up. Um, and this is detailed in our separate video, which we have on how to restart a BTEC battery. So we'll put a link in the video for that extra detailed video on how to restart your battery. But again, on the G2 ones, it's as simple as just pressing a flat battery reset. 
Now, along with the operation side uh, of the battery is storage. Now, we get a lot of questions in relation to how to store lithium batteries, and there's a lot of different feedback out there. Essentially, we're pretty comfortable with the two main ways of storing a battery. However, the key, key thing here that we'll always reiterate is what kills uh, a lithium battery cell, for example, is being left in a discharged state. So it's always important to make sure your battery does have adequate charge, the adequate state of charge in the battery. So a couple of ways of doing that if you are keeping your van or your motor home or your boat in storage, for example, is you can leave it on charge. However, please ensure that you are using a dedicated lithium charger with the correctly set float voltages according to the battery specification. So you can leave a charger connected, make sure it is a lithium dedicated with the correct settings there though. The other way of doing it as well is you can actually completely isolate the system. So for example, my recommendation would be there to make sure that your battery does have a higher than 90% state of charge. And if you've got a battery isolator, for example, or fuses, um, circuit breakers, just completely isolate the battery so there's no longer any load on the batteries. And you can leave it in storage like that. And just check on the battery every few weeks to just make sure that again, it is keeping a high state of charge that the BMS hasn't shut off um, if you've left the battery, say, for a year or something like that. So two options there. You can disconnect all loads and just keep an eye on the state of charge. Or you can also leave a lithium dedicated charger that has been set correctly um, to maintain the battery. So again, just a key point there that the biggest killer of a lithium battery or lithium cell is having them left at a low state of charge. Now, just another key point there from personal experience is if you are keeping your van plugged in um, because you've got the fridge running in the van, keeping all your perishables cold, just keep an eye on that mains power lead, your, uh, your shore power lead, if it was a boat, for example. Keep an eye that that does actually still have power. Too often do we see it's accidentally knocked out, your partner unplugs it to plug something else in and forgets to plug it back in again. And the battery will obviously flatten very quickly if you do have a fridge or lights on full time, for example. Um, but secondly, you may not notice it for a long time, um, which can damage or shorten the lifespan off the cells. But more importantly, if you've got perishables in the fridge, it's a horrible experience later on cleaning it up. Uh, so that really covers the operation side of our BTEC batteries.